Today on Jig Labs, we're going to let Excel do some counting for us, utilizing COUNTIF and COUNTIFS. Let's get started. All right, now that you've got Excel open and ready to go, today we want to look at COUNTIF and COUNTIFS. Last week's video, we looked at sum if and sum if s to get our sales by salesperson. And with the sum if s function, we're looking at sales by salesperson given a certain date range. Well, today we want to do the same thing, but we want to count the number of sales that Alice has, Jack has, Robert and Sophia have. First, we're just going to count their total sales, and then we're going to add in the date ranges like we did in last week's video. As a reminder, we are pulling these sum totals as well as the counting of sales from our data tab. It's our JIC Lab sales report where we have invoices, dates, salesperson costs, and etc. where we're going to go through and utilize Excel equations to count the number of sales per salesperson and then we'll add in the date range. Now keep in mind as well in the um, previous videos that you can watch up here we've also utilized naming of the cells. This makes it a lot easier when making an equation to reference the cell references that you have given a name when making your equation. So you don't have to go back and reference the data, cells, columns, C through C, or whatever whatever the case may be. Naming the cells saves you a lot of time and makes you a lot more efficient when it comes time to enter in your equations. So let's jump back over to the summary tab. As everyone remembers, we've utilized count before in our original intro to Excel video. So real quick, let's do a total count, which is just count, and we want to count all of the sales. 80, which is, we know that because we've entered those in. So we have 80 sales in total. Down here, we've already have entered our sum. So once we count each of our sales by each salesperson, we will get the total in D17 as well as E17. So let's take a look at count if. So just like sum if, you're going to go count. Let's try actually writing it correctly this time. So you're going to go count if, open the parentheses, and it's your range that you're looking for. Well, we are looking to count the salesperson. And what criteria do we want? We want it to equal to B13, which is Alice in this case. We are going to lock in the column by using our shortcut key F4, and then we will close that parentheses. And we'll see that Alice has 24 sales. Now let's come down to Jack real quick. Equals count if, and we are going to utilize clicking, we're gonna select our salespeople and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom. We're gonna hit comma, and we'll come back to the summary tab and we're going to select Jack. We're going to close those parentheses and we'll see 16. Now let's lock these guys into place real quick. Because I want to copy this down, copy both of these down, and I'm going to paste them over here, just the equation so you to see. So it did update because that cell wasn't fully locked in. So let's just go ahead and make it B14 because just to show you the differences between count if, both are count if, but one, this one here in F16, we're utilizing the cell name references. So we're saying count if the criteria range equals the salesperson. And what does that, what do we count and what do we want it to equal? Well, we want it to equal Jack. Down below in F17, it's exactly the same. Count if, what is our range? Well, we're on the data C3, the C82, and we come over here and we see that that is the salesperson. That is what we named this cell. So, back, so we could see that we are referencing the data tab C3 to C82, which is exactly the same as the salesperson 
that we have named in our previous videos. And then what do we want it to equal? Well, we're on the summary tab as we said last week with the sum video. When you start clicking back and forth in the equations, it'll put that data, I'm sorry, it'll put the tab name down there for you. But since we're on the summary tab, we want to reference B14, we're good with or without referencing the summary data sheet name. So we'll just update that. So now we have the data range of the criteria and what does that criteria need to equal if we're going to count. So likely so, we can just come in here and copy all this down. And as you'll notice, this is utilizing the cell references as entered without any of the names. Alice is referencing the cell name references. So if we copy and paste this down, this is currently 16. Let's just copy these guys down. As you'll see, Jack's answer is the same, whether or not we use the cell name references or just the standard cell referencing. So we see we have 80 total sales, which is what we got up here by using the count of total sales. So that's great. Now let's do like we did last week. We want to take a look at, we want the sum of all of Alice's sales given a certain date range. And again, count if is great for counting all the sales for Alice, but it only works with one criteria. If you want to add in multiple criterias, just like with sum if and sum if s, you have to use count if s. That allows you to have multiple criteria that you're going to sort through the data, match up, and then count. So right now, we're going to come in here and we're going to say count if I could actually type today, we're gonna to come in here and say count if s, and we're gonna be good to go. And the first criteria, we wanna look at the salesperson. What do we want that to equal? We In this equation, we want that to equal Alice, and we will lock b in the place, only because, no, I'm sorry, b in the place, and then we'll hit the comma again, and what's our second set of criteria? Well, we wanna look at the date of the invoices, which is a cell name reference that we've made. And we, again, since we want this to be greater than or equal to, we have to use the quotation marks around it and say, and we want it to be greater than or equal to C8. And we're gonna lock that guy in. But again, like we did last week, Right now, if we close the parentheses, that's gonna give us not the answer we're looking for. So let's just come in here and hit enter just to show you. And let's make this start date 1-2-2021. So we're looking for the whole days of sales. Well, it's not doing anything, but we can see that sum if s has updated. So we know that we have to come in here and edit this equation to add in another set of criteria because just saying it's greater than and equal to our start date, well, that doesn't do anything because we need an end date as well. So we're gonna add in another comma. And once again, we're gonna look at the date range criteria. We're gonna say equals, it's less than or equal to, enter the and sign and our end date. And we're gonna lock that guy into place. Now we can close the parentheses and hit enter. And you'll notice that 24 and 24 is the same. And we're going to copy these guys down and all of the numbers are actually the same. We have a total of 80 sales, but that's because if we go back to our data sheet, we're going to see that our last sale is in June 26th. So we could come back to the summary and just do 3 1 2021. So now we can see count if is giving us the total count of Alice's sales out of all of the sales that are referenced on the data sheet. But count if S is giving us all of Alice's, Jackson, Roberts, and Sophia's sales from January 1st to March 1st. And that has been a 30 sales total. So we come back over here and let's take a look. Now this is the two differences between count if is again, you got your criteria range and what does that criteria equal? Count if S allows you to have multiple criterias. So if you want to count Alice as the salesperson in a given date range, you would have to utilize count if S because that gives you 
the multiple facets and variables that you can enter into your equation to take a look at and be able to count what you want to count. So again, if we look over here in the highlighted sections, count if the range, what's that criteria equal to? Count if S is the same exact format, criteria range one, what does it equal? Criteria range two, which is the date, we want that to be greater than or equal to our start date of C8. And then criteria range three, date again, which is all these criteria ranges names are referencing data, our data tab with cell reference names. And then again, it's less than or equal to our end date. If we were to make this 123121, again, all of these numbers match because it's all within the same confines of the range. One more thing I want to mention with count if and count if s as well as sum if and sum if s in your criteria range in your criteria if you just enter a cell reference it's going to say excel will assume you want it to equal the cell reference in this case we want to count all the salesperson invoices that equal b13 that equal alice now down here if we look at count if s where we put in the quotations of greater than or equal to and the cell reference, we are telling Excel that we want it to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to that cell reference. If we were just to put in date equals C8, it's gonna say, give us all of Alice's sales that happened January 1st, 2021. With, but without putting the quotations of greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or does not equal, that um, Excel assumes it's going to equal that cell reference you put. So the quotations and the and sign and whatever greater than or equal to does not equal allows you to put in those ranges. So just keep that in mind as you're working through your data. Hopefully this quick exercise of count if and count if s has given you the tools and knowledge that allow you to sort through your data to tally and count up particular things that you want given a certain set of criteria. Once again, with one thing or criteria, count if works just fine. But if you need to have multiple criteria, as in, in this example, count by salesperson in a start and end date and the data in between that, you would need to utilize count if s. Thanks for watching JIC Labs today as we explored count if and count if s. Hopefully these are gonna help you get the answers out of the data that you've been looking for and save you some counting off your fingers because taking your shoes off in the office never goes well. See you guys next week. What do we want that to equal? We want that to, we want, ugh. So, so what?